a book meant to start conversation. My next guest is familiar to us here at NBC4 because he is an account exec with us, but his newest venture adds author to his resume. Sean Bailey joining me now to give us insight into his book. It is titled Rough Draft, Three Universal Questions to Reflect Upon. Sean, good to have you in. Thanks for having me. All right, let's talk about your motivation for this book, Sean, because I said earlier, a lot of people say, you know, I should write a book. Right. I've got a lot to say, right? When was it that, that the, you know, the switch flipped and you said, yes, I'm gonna put pen to paper. It was a process. In 2009, I started a blog that actually did really well. And I wasn't even a very good writer when I look back at it. It's called My Baby Rock, named after my, my daughter. Her name is Reese Olivia Christine. I started doing this Truth Be Told Tuesday and I started putting it on Facebook and on my blog. Somebody, a high school classmate, uh, DM'd me one day and said, you should write a book. What you say really resonates with people. I thought that was great. But then I started getting more emails saying the same thing. And then fast forward to 2019, Carrie Oberbinner from Academy Author Elite, who published my book, heard me speak. And he says, I need to talk to you. And he asked me, what do you love to do? I said, I love to play golf. I love to read. And I love to write. He says, do you have a manuscript? Have you ever written anything? I go, actually, I do. And I sent it to him. And then the rest, rest became history. The rest is history. How incredible. Okay, so what did it take then, Sean? Because you've told me, um, you didn't just sit down and write the book. It takes intentionality. Anything yes. you want to do in life takes great intention. I started writing on September the 1st, 2019, Labor Day, at the back of a Starbucks in Worthington, Ohio. <laughs> and that really became my office. Probably 90% of the time, I would spend about two hours an evening and go and write. And on the weekends, I wrote for 674 days. And, straight. Uh, straight. And I knew what I wanted to say. And the book's outlined in three different sections. And I wrote the first section, second section, and third section. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about what you had to say. And I want to read in your introduction, uh, there's a quote you say, the purpose of this book is to start an internal dialogue with the reader surrounding the three most important questions they can ask themselves during their lifetime. Acknowledging and answering these three questions dramatically changed my life. It has the potential to change yours too. So let's talk about those three questions. What are you hoping people sit back and think about? Well, I hope, they're not, I hope I'm not being presumptuous and saying they're the most important questions, but I felt for my life they were. Number one, who are you? Number two, what do you believe? And number three, what your purpose is? I truly believe when you can answer those three questions, you move down a path of becoming a better version of yourself. Once you get down to becoming a better version of yourself, you become an asset in everyone's life, not a liability. Let's take uh, who are you? A lot of people never really ask themselves that question. Ephesians 2.10 says we're, we're, we are God's masterpiece. I think a lot of people forget that. And we don't look at each other as masterpieces. That doesn't mean we're better than another person, but that's the way God created us. I think it's what's not only said that we don't recognize others as masterpieces, we don't even realize our own innate value. Once you do that, now you can look at people totally differently. Uh, our country lacks a lot of empathy right now. And the reason why we don't have empathy because we have no understanding for each other. And then the second part was, what do you believe? We all believe something, right? Everybody believes something. And now we live in a situation that if you share what you believe and it's not consistent with another group of people, you can be excoriated, you can be canceled. You all, so many things can happen. You can even lose your job. And what's sad about that is, it cuts off all kind of discourse. Nobody wants to talk. They only talk in echo chambers with the same tribe, with people that think like themselves. That's not productive at all. And then the last one's the purpose. And I do a lot of public speaking. I always say, if you don't know what your purpose is, that's fine. But when you do find out, if you're the only one to benefit from that purpose, then you're being selfish. Your purpose should make a difference in other people's lives. And I think it's, you know, I want to make it clear because you do mention faith and, and God in your book, but this is not about conversion. This is not about making people believe what you believe, but in fact, almost the opposite of that, right? Yeah, I don't think anybody wants to hear a sermon. They'd rather see a sermon. Like I wrote my introduction, I think the crown jewel of anything is not conversion of thought, it's just conversation. We've lost our ability to converse with each other. Uh, you, like I said, you're, if you think differently than me, then all of a sudden you're an evil or a bad person. It shouldn't be that way. I just wanted to share what I wanted to share in love and then let people maybe just have an internal dialogue and start asking themselves the questions. Every time I do public speaking, I bring up those three questions. You can see consternation in the audience. And I always say, it's not the fact that you don't know the answers. I didn't know forever. It's the fact that we never ask ourselves those questions. Right, so we don't sit down. And, and like you mentioned, we're not intentional in thinking about no, those. No. 
How do people find your book and get it, Sean? They can get it on Amazon, they can get it on Barnes & Noble, and they can get it at my website too, seanbbailey.com. You're gonna be doing some book signings, some public speaking, things like that. Should people follow along your website? Uh, I don't have anything about any of the book signs on the website yet. yet. I'll be at Annie's Wine Shop uh, December 13th. I thought I'd probably need to get everyone drunk before they buy my book. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so we're going to be there on the 13th of December and then Barnes & Noble at Polaris in February, but there's no date set yet. Set yet. Okay. So you'll be out there, but you can order the book. Um, I've read many of the experts or excerpts, I'm sorry, and it is profound. It's eye-opening. So hopefully other people find that Thank you. as well. So, Sean, thank you. Appreciate it.